Hello everyone, in this video you're about to watch, have you ever had a moment where you're not sure of what to do for the next level or what to take as a step for the next level? In this video you're about to watch, Apostle Joshua Salmon describes what to do when you know you're ready for the next level. Be blessed as you listen. Revelations chapter 4. <laughs> I love the word of God, my God. Revelation chapter 4. This morning we'll be considering verse 1. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were the voice of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show you the things that must be hereafter. Hallelujah. I'd like us to read the first two words that you can see. Ready? First two words. One to go. Mm -mm. First two words. One to go. One more time. My question is after what? Because the Bible begins by saying after this. And if you're an intelligent person studying scripture, you don't just begin to study the story. What happened? He said, after this, that means you need the understanding of the this for what he's about to say to make sense of you. He says, after this, I looked. Very profound revelation. After this, when you study the book of Revelations, now it was at a time in church history where John, John was banished into an island called Patmos on account of his faith. Verse Chapter 1 tells us, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Are we together? So whilst he was there, so it says after this, after chapter 1, after chapter 2, after chapter 3, and after chapter 4. So the Bible says that whilst he was in the Isle of Patmos, can you hear me? Are we still together? The Bible says something happened to him. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And the moment he got in the spirit, he began to have several encounters, mighty encounters. And he was instructed to write because those words were faithful and true. Are we together now? Now, did you know that the encounter in chapter one alone, if all you have in your Christian experience is chapter one's encounter, that is enough to embolden and empower you. Because the book starts with the revelation of Jesus himself. So he sees seven lampstands and he says, in the midst of the lampstand, I saw one like the son of man. And he begins to describe him, profound description. And out of that revelation came what we call the letter to the seven churches, beginning from Ephesus and he ends with the seven church being Laodicea. Are we together now? The church in Laodicea. So he gave them profound commendations and rebukes as it were. Now, you would think that John, that was a heightened experience. None of the apostles had the privilege of that kind of experience. Even though they walked with Jesus in the flesh, no one was granted that opportunity to see him in glory in that form and that fashion and to begin to document profound mysteries, warnings to the church that were in the then Asia Minor. And then after such a spectacular encounter, series of encounters, the Bible now says, after this. So there was something left beyond seeing the lampstand. There was something left beyond seeing the Son of Man. There was something left. I would think that if I saw Jesus... I saw the glory of God and I'd received the commendations and warnings. What else will be left? The Bible says, after this. After this. After the mighty things that God has done and is doing through your life. After the expansion in ministry. He says, after this, I still looked. It takes stamina to look when there are good things behind you. Are we together now? It is easier for someone who has failed or is a nobody to look. That should be the obvious thing. But not after great strides like this. 
John was in the middle of a phenomenal time in his life as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, after these spectacular experiences, he said, I still looked. I hope you know his invitation only came because he looked. So it was as though God was waiting to see if the experiences he had had so far would cause him to plateau, would cause him to be contented, would cause him to not want to press for more. He says, when I looked and I beheld, there was a voice already waiting and says, since you have now looked, come. Are we together? It takes focus. It takes hunger. It takes meekness to still look after this. After you are called a man of God already, accredited by signs and wonders. After you are called a businessman already, multi-millionaire businessman with your evidences. After you are called a successful career person. You see, let me tell you, the passion to become when you are not is almost natural. Because the awareness of your failure and limitations are enough motivation to want to get out of that place. But by the time you have achieved a certain level of results, the, the passion to continue dies. This is the deception of success. We are not talking here about a man who is an unbeliever who just became a believer. First that he was an apostle, then called John the Beloved, a name that was not used for any other apostle including Paul. John the Beloved. Are we together now? Yes. Jesus was so endeared to him, he was one of the disciples that finished strong. All other disciples ran away, they never made it to the cross. John was the one person who saw the crucified Christ even before he died. You would think with all those kinds of ministerial credentials, what else would John be looking for? Then the Bible says, after this, after healing all the sick, after raising people from the wheelchairs, after having such a name, what is there to seek God for? The Bible says, after this, I looked. Hmm. After this, I looked. When the Spirit of God opened my eyes to see this, this message was first for me, even before preparing it for you. This is not a message for weak people. This is a message for those who God has honored to a measure. Those who have tasted of great things already. That's what is a believer's meeting. After this, if you are not a champion, the message is not for you. It's a message for those who have triumphed to a measure. It is a, it is a secret for continuity. After this, I looked. Hmm. I looked and behold, do you know the kind of focus it takes to look? Because when you have already arrived and attained a measure of results, usually there will be applauds loud enough to distract you from going forward. That's why I said it takes hunger, it takes focus, it takes meekness to still look. What about the applauds of yesterday? You want me to ignore that? How about the obvious results that follow my life like a shadow? He says, after this, this is a prophetic message for someone. After your first prophecy, let's see what happens. After the first church was built. After the first million. After the first billion. It says, after this. It's a clarion call for champions. Men who have done much for the kingdom. And yet God is saying there is still another dimension. But it says, after this. So this morning we are discussing this... After this has kept many people down, they stopped looking. They started looking to even get to that point. But they now made their past and their present become their future. There was nothing new again in their experience. So the Bible says, after this, I have seen the fruits of prayer, but after this, I have seen the excellence that comes with obeying God, but after this, is someone learning now? He says, after this, I, as an act of my will, 
conscious of the fact that a man can never plateau in God, if you are interested, there are always higher realms and dimensions. He says, after this, I looked. The question is, he never said, I looked towards. Because in looking, you first have to look away from before you look towards. Are we together? At every given point in time, your eye is focused on something. So if I have to look at you, my first assignment is to look away from here. Then I now look at what is now my current gaze. Moses was looking, but not at the burning bush. Help those under the anointing. Are we together now? So Moses, listen to me. When God wanted to get his attention for a new experience, I hope you know that even though he was called to be a deliverer and a prophet, huh? when he ran away from Egypt, watch this now, something remarkable happened to him. For 40 years, he was now a successful shepherd. He was not a failure. With respect to that shepherd, you would call, he was, this guy was a businessman. He was doing well, yet he was even about to start. With respect to destiny, he had not started. It's amazing the things we keep celebrating, yet in heaven, the first page has not even opened. So, if you had seen Moses 40 years after leaving Egypt, heaven is still saying, when will you start? Deliverer, you are still a shepherd. But he's saying, I'm a successful shepherd. I'm a successful shepherd. I mean, I have my evidences. My sheep is there. My ability to lead sheep is there. And one day, watch this. When God wanted him to rise to a new level, the Bible says there was a bush. That bush began to burn. The first thing God had to get was his sight. I want to explain to you what happened to John. After this, my eyes and my attention were somewhere focused on my success and my results of yesterday and for as long as i kept looking at it god was saying there is more i, I know that you are an intercessor but there is a prophetic dimension i know you are you are doing well as a pastor but that ministry would not just end pastoral there is a, a an apostolic dimension after this i looked Everything God gives you is not all he intends to give. God is always progressive. After this. So Moses is tending the sheep of Jethro. And the Bible says when it was time for God to get his attention, he created a scenario that was greater than what he had seen. And then... Moses said that that scenario kept distracting him. For a while, he was still looking at yesterday and today. Still trying to go into the future, but he didn't want to leave yesterday. But one point, the Bible says, and Moses turned aside. And when God saw that he had turned aside, the voice, just like in Revelation, came again. And he says, Moses, now we can talk. I've gotten your attention. It seems to me like God does not talk to men till he finds out that their attention is focused on him. He will desire to speak, but he's patient enough to allow you until your current level stops distracting you and you can look beyond the success of today. After this, I looked. Moses was a great shepherd, but that prophetic dimension was not yet there. And the Bible says when he saw the bush, we don't know how long that bush was burning. But this morning, there is a bush that is burning. And God is telling you, in as much as there are great things I've done with you, the page is not even open. I know you have seen Jesus. I know you have received messages to the seven churches. But this is only the beginning. After this, I looked. I know you have tasted of the power of God. You have seen the anointing of the Spirit. I know that you have seen success in life, in business, in career, perhaps in ministry. But the first message tonight is do you have the hunger enough 
do you have the courage enough do you have the discernment enough to love your tomorrow more than your today can you look away from great things can you look away from the applauds and the successes and focus on what god intends to do now after this i looked you've been at the united kingdom for years and in all fairness to you god has been faithful good house good children great news this message is for you after these can you look can you still look that there is a purpose beyond having a house and having an msc or a phd what did god tell you before he sent you it was not an academic issue academic was just a vehicle now you are done you are successful you are working but after this he says i looked Please give me volume. Hallelujah. In Philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14. Help me again media. Philippians 3. Let's work together. 13 and 14. Philippians chapter 3. 13 and 14. Paul made a very profound statement that I want us to pay attention to. Let me show you a man who has mastered the art of defeating the successes of the current level and striving for higher realms. He says, brethren, I count myself to not have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. He never said forgetting the failures. No, no. Failures are not the only thing you are supposed to forget. There are many good things that can keep you in your yesterday and you may never experience the other sides of God. He says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before, verse 14. I like the first two words. He says, I press. It's an act of my will. I press. Motivated or otherwise, I press. He says, I press towards the mark. No, this cannot be the greatest of the prophetic. This cannot be the greatest of the apostolic. Thank God for yesterday. This cannot be the greatest of koinonia. This cannot be the greatest of my finances, my business. I press. Brethren, I count myself. You may count me a great man of God. You may count me a great businessman. But I count myself. It's not condemnation. It's the passion to continue. The passion to remain grateful for what you count me as but i count myself to not have apprehended but this one thing i may not know how to do other things but there is one thing i've mastered the art of defeating my successes of yesterday failure can kill as much as success failure can limit as much as success this one thing i do forgetting the things that are behind This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. I want to show you what kills champions. I want to show you why people do not remain. I want to show you why people are warriors and giants and champions today. And they fall like a pack of cards. They have not mastered this thing Paul mastered. I do not count myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, I press. I press. I press, I press towards. Successful yesterday, but I still press. Successful today, but I still press. Please sit down. Please sit down. We're still discussing verse 1. Come up hither. So the Bible tells us, do you know every major version amplified new international version new king james they did not change this statement all of them start by saying after this regardless the translations the spirit of god saw the need to preserve those two words when i began to study this i stayed in these two words for more than one week after this <laughs> The more successful you are, the longer you will stay on that scripture. Because your deeds are many. They represent crowns. They represent accomplishments. 
they represent achievements after this that means the preceding expressions will not profit you till you meditate on this after this more love more power more of you in my life listen there is a reason why many people never do so much with God there is a reason why many people rise to a level whether in ministry or in business or in career and then they plateau only to speak about the miracles and the mighty things of yesterday I want to hand to you this morning a secret a powerful secret are we together now it takes focus it takes hunger it takes passion to still be doing well to still be making progress to still be receiving the uploads and the louder the upload comes the more you do not let it distract you it says after this i looked some of you were looking well your gaze was intact until men began to clap their applause became louder than his voice. It so distracted you. Right now, you do not even know your true north. Where that bearing is again. After this. After the one million came. Hmm, after I moved to UK. For some, I stopped looking. I looked before getting the visa. Because that, it made me fast. It made me pray. I mean, I had a, something driving me. But after this. The Bible tells us that the door was opened and the voice came. It did not come just as a gift. It came as a reward because God was watching. Chapter 1, watching. Chapter 2, watching. Chapter 3, watching. You mean in spite of the fact that you have been given the privilege to document this, your focus is not distracted. In spite of the fact that even if we were to stop here, you would still be a champion as an apostle. He says, after this, I looked. And because he looked and beheld, a door was opened in heaven. Where was he before? So even in heaven, there is still room for more. You would think because he was already there, that meant all he saw was all there was to be seen. He says, I looked and the first voice which I heard was as a voice of the trumpet talking with me. And he said this, in honor to my passion, in honor to my hunger, in honor to my press. He says, I see a desire in you to last. I see a desire in you to remain. I have studied the way you do ministry and I see that you intend to remain even after 30 years. You intend to remain in business. You intend to be a leader in your field. Therefore, come up here. It's a call. Come up here. There are things I will show you, but the requirement is that I must probe your hunger. I must probe your thirst. I must probe your passion. Can I tell you, God is glorious. God is loving, but he's not foolish. He draws men according to his perception of their hunger, their passion for him. You would think just because he loved you and died for you, he will give you everything, grant you access to any realm. No, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. There are dimensions that are rewards. And for you to qualify their God studies hunger. Hunger is a powerful component in the believer's work. Hunger is proof of health when people become sick the first thing they lose is appetite medical practitioners are here and they use appetite the lack of it sometimes to confirm that this man is sick truly because all men who are well should be hungry and should be thirsty hallelujah are we together So come up hither is a journey into higher realms of authority and power. Come up hither is not just a statement. 
is an initiation. God is calling you to tell you there are higher realms of power. There are higher realms of authority. And that he wants to bring you into. But you have to see there must be that desire. My God, Moses never knew that the rod he was holding could become the rod of God one day. That that rod could part the Red Sea. Had he tried it at that point, that version of him could not perform that miracle. Only God knows what else your hands can do. Only God knows what else your mind can do. Only God knows what else your organization can do. But that version of you, that version of consciousness and understanding cannot go that far. So he said, come up hither. Come up hither. Come up hither. Why is he asking you to come up hither? Because there are things that need to be altered as far as your perception is concerned. Come up hither is a journey into higher realms of revelation is altering your sight is the business of sight come up here and i will show you not i will tell you there are things you need to see you can doubt what you hear but you cannot doubt what you see there are times you pick a call and maybe because of some network challenge you, you can you need to verify who is speaking and the person almost gets angry and say you've forgotten my voice but not when you are seeing you cannot look at someone and say are you the one you see that now sight is more powerful than sound because it creates greater conviction come up hither and i will show you is god speaking to someone so it is a journey to higher levels of authority and power and that happens by higher levels of illumination and revelation let me tell you the truth the whole journey of come up hither is a business of consciousness and revelation come up here is because God wants to do something to your consciousness your understanding the revelation of the spirit at work in your life because you see authority in this kingdom is a measure of the light that you have and that you have received I don't want to go ahead of myself but when you go to chapter 5 the worship of the lamb by the 20 and 4 elders the Bible says I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. Is that right? Then the Bible says, the elder tapped me and he said, weep not. For the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, is worthy to open the book. He now said, I saw, I looked on the throne and I saw a lamb as though had been slain, having seven eyes and seven horns. Take note of that statement seven eyes and seven horns the eye represents light and revelation the horns represent authority so for every dimension of authority there is a light component that connects to it seven eyes and seven horns seven eyes and seven horns you don't step into that zone of authority until you have the light component i have seen this in my visions many times and so i know not just by scripture it has become my experience. You are empowered by light. You cannot demonstrate authority beyond your level of light. Your authority is at the mercy of your spiritual understanding. When God wants to expand your reach in terms of exercising authority, what happens is that he opens your consciousness by revelation to higher truths, deeper dimensions. And this is what God has called us to experience even this morning is someone changing hmm. so the whole journey of come up here is a journey of revelation and alter an alteration to your consciousness revelations 4 verse 1 it says come up here and i will show you revelation chapter 5 verse 1 i want to show you a few scriptures 5 verse 1 media Let's walk together. We'll look at verse 1 and then verse 6. It says, and I saw. Somebody say, and I saw. Are you seeing that? It's a the, is the whole business of sight. See. Go to verse 6, please. Revelations 5 and verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of this, I saw. I beheld, I saw. I beheld, I saw. I beheld, I saw. In fact, let me give you one more scripture. Revelations um, chapter 6 
let's look at verse 1, verse 3, and verse 5. All of them will say, come and see. Mm. Come. If you come up hither, it is so that you can see. One of the four elders said, verse 1, come and see. Verse 3, come and see. Verse 5, come and see. So when he calls you, it's not just come and watch. It's not just come and roam around. He's calling you so that you can come and see. Call unto me and he says, I will answer. Is that in your Bible? I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So the way to knowledge is to show you. When you see it, you can have that knowledge. Come unto me and I will answer. I will show you. The, my cure to your ignorance is your sight. Show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Your knowledge is at the mercy of what you see. When God wants to correct a man's ignorance and take away spiritual limitation from your life, he gives you a higher perception of spiritual things. Let me tell you the truth. There is something God can show you about finances that will make it look like you are holding a charm. You will conquer finances in this realm in a way that surprises you. There is something God can show you about the healing ministry and you will command tremendous power. It's not just an impartation. It's a product of light. Most times we just seek impartations. You see, impartation is like fuel in a car. The fuel does not drive the car. Are we together now? You still need a driver. Revelation is that driver. The driver without the fuel will not be able to move. But you just carry gas, a jerry can say of gas, and just put it in the car. You're not going anywhere without a good driver. It doesn't matter even if it's a new car. Revelation is that driver. It creates transitions. The value of the anointing is that it comes upon an individual who is transformed by light. You see the potential of impartation when transformation by light has happened. Are we together now? When the vessel is small, it makes the oil small. You will blame the oil, but the oil has potential to assume the shape of any vessel given to it. The prophet said the problem is that the vessel is small. He says, go and borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. We believe you are blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.